All right, so in this video, I'm going to actually show you how we actually can count microstates and how this actually leads us to understand what system the mic, the, the, um, the, so what, uh, sorry, what um, state, what macro state the system will most likely be in given this counting and the fact that we can actually calculate probabilities from this. So again, to remind you, um, an Einstein solid uh, is a solid that has three harmonic oscillators, and each one of those harmonic oscillators can store units of energy. Um, and we're allowed, we're, we just call each one of those unit energy, um, uh, you know, so again, the, the, um, uh, the, the Einstein solid uh, stores energies in, uh, in quantities of, of E or epsilon. Um, uh, where epsilon is basically related to the harmonic oscillator. It's this constant, basically, that depends on the spring constant, h-bar, and the mass of the, the actual um, atom. Uh, and so, and remember that it has equally spaced, um, uh, that the harmonic oscillator has equally spaced energy levels that have spacing of epsilon. So a, a harmonic oscillator can have one uh, epsilon of energy, it can have two epsilons of energy, it can even have zero epsilons of energy, uh, but they're all equally spaced. And so what we're going to ask is this. So it's based on what we were talking about before, which is for a given macro state. Um, so for a given macro state, how many micro states make uh, up that macro state? All right, so this is the basic idea. Um, and so, uh, for instance, let's say uh, we want to, um, uh, let's, let's start really easily. Um, uh, and, and for the record, the, the number of different ways that we can arrange these, um, we're gonna call its multiplicity, which we're gonna use the capital omega for. And it's gonna be a function of u, which is the total energy, and n, which is the total number of, atom, of atoms. Um, and so again, this is the multiplicity, um, or uh, the multiplicity, or number of uh, microstates. All right. So let's uh, look at a really simple example. Let's try to find out um, if we have uh, one atom. So n is equal to one, and we have uh, one unit of energy. Okay, one epsilon. Um, what are we gonna have? So again, let me just go ahead and just uh, draw this uh, draw this atom. Remember, for one atom, one atom has three uh, um, has three. Uh, uh, oscillators. And so, um, if we actually look at the energy diagram, this is going to be the least interesting set of energy diagrams we'll ever have. Um, this is any, uh, this is uh, zero epsilon, this is one epsilon, zero epsilon, one epsilon, zero epsilon, one epsilon. One epsilon. Um, there are three different arrangements we can have. I'll use different colors for them. Uh, we can have um, zero, zero, and one. We can have zero, one, zero. Or we can have one, zero, zero. All right, so those are the three different ways that we can arrange one unit of energy in one atom. So what we would say is, is we would say for this um, for this system, the multiplicity of u equal to one and n equal to one is three, because there are three different ways of arranging those uh, that one unit of energy among those three different oscillators. I hope that makes sense. Um, that's that's a basic idea. Um, all right, so we can we can basically arrange uh, arrange those uh, three different ways. Let's look at one other example. Um, let's do one atom, so n equal to one. 
and let's do u equal to 2. We're going really slowly here, uh, but that's mostly because um, we're going to stop being able to do this. So I'm going to get rid of the energy diagram. I'm going to stop doing that. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to just call this um, this state here, uh, for instance, the red state. Let's, let's do the red. This red state would be called 1, 0, 0. Uh, because the first oscillator has one unit of energy. And the second oscillator, uh, the, sec the next two oscillators have uh, zero units of energy. By the same token, we would call this, the green one would be called 0, 1, 0. Okay, it just this is just going to make it faster to um, to to write. Um, and so again, obviously, if you're not following this, uh, the blue one would be zero zero one. Okay, so um, we have uh, two units of energy. Let's look at what we can do. Again, there are three oscillators, so we could have um, we could have two zero zero. All right, two units of energy in the first oscillator, zero in the second, zero in the third. We could have uh, zero two zero. And zero zero two, okay. Those are that's the that's the simple first one. Now the other thing we could do is we could start with one one zero. We could also have one zero one, and we could also have zero one one, okay. Uh, and I'm pretty sure uh, that um, is the grand total of the different ways that we can have it. Um, uh, I think I've gotten all of them. Um, so. That's uh, so. This one would have a multiplicity, u equals uh, two, and equals one is uh, has a multiplicity of six. Okay. Um, hopefully, uh, people get that. Um, so it turns out that this is fine. Um, this is this is great for uh, um, uh, for one oscillator, um, but you can quickly see that if we start to make these bigger, so if we did, um, if we did uh, n equals two even, and u equals to two, um, you notice we're gonna have, so now since n equals two, there's again, there's three oscillators per atom, uh, so that's six, um, and so you'd have to have two, zero, 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 uh, zero two zero 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 two zero 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 and so on and so forth and there are a lot more of these uh, because I'd also have to distribute all the ones across there and things like this um, many more states and so this is quickly going to become very unwieldy and we don't want to have to do this every time um, luckily there's an equation that tells us how to do it um, which if uh, we want to calculate the multiplicity uh, we simply um, we're gonna call uh, this number uh, that multiplies the u, we're going to call that q. So we're gonna say uh, u is equal to q epsilon, where q is just that number that's gonna be one, two, et cetera, et cetera. Or the other way to talk about it is that u is equal to, uh, or sorry, um, q is equal to, or is defined as um, u over epsilon. Uh, so we're just removing the epsilon. If you do that, you get that, um, this is the formula that works, um, plus three n minus one factorial. If you don't remember from your high school classes, factorial just means that you multiply by that number and keep going down. So five factorial uh, is um, five times four times three times two times one. Um, that's what a factorial is. Um, so we put a q factorial down here we do a 3n minus 1 factorial. I'm not going to go into the derivation of this, but let's just check it for the two systems that we actually wrote things down for. So first of all, let's check it for um, 1, 1. All right, so we're going to put a, uh, this is going to be 1 plus uh, 3 times 1 minus 1 factorial divided by 1 factorial and then 3 times 1 minus 1 factorial. All right, uh, so this is just going to give us 3 factorial divided by 1 factorial um, times uh, 2 factorial. Um, for this one, we can actually just calculate it. Uh, this is 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 1 times 2 times 1. Um, uh, the 2's cancel out, um, and you're just going to get that this is, and everything else is 1, so you're just going to get that this is equal to 3. 
And that's exactly what we found up here. Uh, we found that uh, that multiplicity is equal to three. Uh, we can then do the same thing for uh, two units of energy and one atom. Um, again, it's going to be two plus three times one minus one factorial divided by uh, two factorial three times one minus one factorial. Um, again, we're gonna get two plus three, that's just five, five minus one, so we get a four factorial. Um, and then we're going to divide this by uh, two factorial, uh, and that's gonna be also multiplied by another two factorial. Again, this is small enough that we can probably just calculate four times three times two times one divided by two, I'm gonna stop including the ones because they're just kind of a pain. Uh, this is two times two. All right, the two times two is gonna cancel out with a four, and you just get that this is three times two times one, which is just six. Again, that is exactly what we found here. So our equation actually works. And that's how we're going to find these multiplicities. Now you may say, okay, so how is that going to help us? What's that going to do for us? Well, it turns out uh, that the, um, the likelihood of being in, an, in a state is going to depend on the multiplicities that you have uh, when you're actually uh, in an actual atom. And so what we're going to do is when we start actually putting solids together, we are going to find that uh, the state that the solid is in depends entirely upon the multiplicity of that system. And once we do that, we will be able to show why uh, thing energy moves from a higher level to a lower level of energy.